Hello everyone and welcome back to ASP.NET Core 1.0. My name is Steve Bishop and in this video we're going to be talking about using view imports files. So view imports files are very similar to view start files in that they allow us to set certain defaults for our razor views before those views are even rendered by the engine. More specifically, the view imports files are used for importing shared directives. Now, we haven't used that term directives up to this point, but we have actually used some directives in earlier videos. At the time of this recording, the directives that we're allowed to put into our view imports file are the following. Add tag helper, remove tag helper, tag helper prefix, using, model, inherits, and inject. So in earlier videos, we were already using the at model directive to declare what kind of class that the view could expect as the model for that view. You could define that model in the view imports file instead of the view directly, but if you think about it, that seems a little silly because most of your views are going to need their own model. You don't necessarily want to have a model that shows up as the default for multiple views because those views are probably going to need a different model than the one that you set as the default. The most common usage that you'll see of a view import file is to include the at using directive. The using directive is very similar, well, it's actually identical to what the using statement does at the top of your classes uh, in C Sharp it brings in the namespaces from other parts of either the .NET framework or your applications so that you don't have to retype those namespaces whenever you want to access a class. Another very common directive that you'll see in the view imports file is the add tag helper. And that's because tag helpers are a very useful tool in views that essentially are like HTML helpers but they are written in a much more HTML syntax type of way. So it looks a little bit better uh, from a developer standpoint to use tag helpers over the HTML helpers. But it really is a stylistic thing. And again, we will talk about tag helpers and HTML helpers at a later point in this video series, but just know that you will probably see an add tag helper directive in a view imports file. Now the last one I'm just gonna kind of touch on here real quick is the inject. The inject directive is for doing dependency injection into your views. And dependency injection is again, a whole other topic for later on in this series. But I just again wanted to point out that you might see an at inject directive in a view imports file. So we have our directory structure like we've seen in previous videos where we have our views main folder and then underneath the views folder is a couple of different subfolders like home and customers. Now since the view imports file is again a view that is not directly called by the controller you're going to see it by convention labeled with an underscore to start the name so you'll see it's underscore view imports. Now if the view imports file is in the views folder then it will have an impact on all of the views in all of the subfolders. So any home view or any view that's in the home subfolder will receive all of the directives that are in the view imports file that exists in the views main folder. If we move the view imports file to the customers subfolder, then the view imports file will only have an effect on those views that are inside the customers subfolder. Again, this is identical to what we saw with our view start file. So let's go ahead and hop on over to our Visual Studio window and let's create a view imports file. So to get started, I'm going to want to put my view imports file in the views folder because I want this, uh, this view imports file to affect all of the files, all of the views in all of my subfolders. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just right click on the views folder I'm going to select add new item. Now I'm going to go down to MVC view imports page and you can see by default we have this underscore view imports.cshtml. This is a convention file name so the MVC 
Razor View Engine will be looking for this file with this specific name. And if we named it something else, it wouldn't detect it and it wouldn't give us our imports. So you're going to want to keep the default name of underscore view imports. So we'll go ahead and use that and select add. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at a few of my CSHTML files and look for some commonalities. We have a I collection of Contoso RTM dot entities. We have a Contoso RTM dot entities here to point to the DIM customer. So both of these use that Contoso RTM dot entities namespace. So I'm going to go ahead and go to my view imports and I'm going to add a using directive. And I'm going to use the full namespace path to our entities. So I'm going to use the Contoso RTM entities. I'll just copy this and I'll paste it right here. Now I don't need a semicolon or anything like that because this is a razor directive. It is not C sharp code. So it is smart enough to determine that this is a namespace and that's all it is. And I don't need that semicolon. So let's go ahead and save that. And now I can take this Contoso entities out of my model because the dim customer class will still be found. And you can see that when I did that, it still detects dim customer as a valid, uh, as a valid class uh, to be using as the model. If I take the using Contoso entities out, I'm just gonna take that out and save it. We'll notice that now that dim customer says it can't find it, the type or namespace of dim customer cannot be found. So once I add it here to my view imports as a directive and save that, it will fix that dim customer and say that it's found. And I can do the same thing now over here to my index file. Whoops, it's this index file. I can go ahead and remove the Contoso RTM entities before the dim customer, and that will still be a valid class for my model. So I can go ahead and save that change. Now, if we look at our index file here, which is our home index view model, this is from back when we were talking about view models. If you recall, when we were talking about those view models, we were saying you want to have view models for the majority of the pages that you, that, uh, that you display. You want to use view models to display data back to your users rather than the models themselves. So we should probably do something about this and probably do something about this because this should all be refactored. But I'm going to leave that up to you to do on your own time. Instead, because we know that this view models folder uh, or this view models namespace is going to contain a lot of models that our views are going to be using throughout our application, it makes sense to go ahead and put that in as another using directive. So now if we save that, then our index file here should be okay with our use of the home index view model as the class. So this saves us some typing here when we try to declare our models. We don't need to do that for every single one of our views anymore. Now just to make sure that this works, let's go ahead and once again run our application and verify that our, uh, that our index is on both the home and on the uh, customers controllers work just fine. So to get to the first one, we're gonna have to enter in some data here. So we'll do 200 first name. I'm just gonna use my name here. And phone number 555-555-5555. Submit. And that comes out just fine. So notice this is that index page that we were using before. And Everything looks perfectly fine. It was able to use that home index view model when it rendered the body of this website, uh, of this web page. So now let's try our customers. We'll just go ahead and do customer list. We know that the customer list also used a I collection of dim customer, but we moved the namespace that points to that customer over here into our using statement right there. So let's take a look. And sure enough, our website rendered just fine. So that's it for my demonstration of the view imports file. There is some more stuff that we will be adding to it a little bit later on in the series. 
but for right now that should give you a good little introduction to what it is and what it does for you. If you guys have any questions about this, please feel free to drop me a line in the comments section below this video. If you liked this video, please don't forget to like it, you know, give it the nice big old thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you can get more of these videos. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you guys at the next video.